Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. So today we're gonna to be going over the model of the spinal cord that we have in the laboratory. So there are two different models we have. We have this one right here that it's showing now, um, which is a more little detailed internal structure of it. It doesn't include the vertebrae around it. Um, and then the other one here is the one from within the vertebrae. So we can see the different layers of, you know, uh, dura matter, pia matter, and so forth, whereas this one isn't as detailed. All right, uh, we're going to go through and label the important parts here, then also talk about the direction in which some of these signals go when they get in the spinal cord. So coming back to the beginning here, let's find a good little spot where it's in the middle. And yeah, let's go back right there is good. All right, let's focus right here. And now let's label all the important parts. Now there is a decent amount to label here. I will warn you on that. So this is gonna be a pretty busy image by the time we're done here. Uh, first layer here is we have this, so this outer connected tissue then within that. So we're talking about the things that protect the spinal cord and this is similar to the protections on the brain. Um, I will show 3D organic anatomy later and show those layers in a little bit more detail too. Uh, so here um, we have the first little layer of fatty tissue here. This is the epidural space. Uh, then you have this layer right here, that's the dura matter, and then right here, this line below it on this model is the subdural space. Now, it might be hard to see, but there is a separation right there. And then this layer below that, we'll move down here a little bit, this is the arachnoid matter. And then this gap in here, then, is the subarachnoid space. Then finally, we have the layer that's directly on the spinal cord, and that one is the Pia matter. So I just want to label all these real quick uh, since we're in this region now. Let's make sure my pen is the correct direction. Uh, so again, uh, the fatty layer here, this is the epidural space. That fatty layer and is vascularized. This is where the vasculature comes from. So this is the epidural. Then this is then the dura matter. So epi is upon the dura. So uh, dura matter. And then right here, this line again is the subdural space. And then next layer then is the arachnoid matter. So this is like the spider web looking area of connected tissue. It kind of acts like the springs and holding it all together to prevent damage. So then within that where those little springs are, which aren't shown here, this is the subarachnoid space. Then this little layer on the actual spinal cord is the pia matter. So that's where I wanted to start with the first couple layers here. Now um, we can look at the two main fissures that come down through the spinal. Actually, let's start out here, uh, coming from the outside in. Now, some of these will come back when we talk about the peripheral nervous system and the spinal nerves that come out because after this space right here it becomes what's called a spinal nerve but there's this little bulge right here and when you're trying to orient yourself with which angle of the spinal cord you're looking at or which direction whether you're anterior or posterior you want to find a dorsal horn that's the easiest thing to find so this little bulge right here is a dorsal horn so you know that is the dorsal side now this model helps because it shows you the dorsal side of the spinal cord, but the other model, you don't see the spinal, the, the, the vertebrae, I mean, uh, you don't see the vertebrae around the spinal cord. So if you know what the vertebrae look like, you can know then the direction of the spinal cord. Uh, so here, this is called the dorsal root ganglion, and then this is called the dorsal root. Whereas the fibers underneath, this is now called the ventral root. So here, we'll just draw this one coming up right there. So we have a fiber coming in here, and then we have fibers coming out here. So dorsal root ganglion, ventral root. Uh, so here, uh, dorsal root ganglion, or you might hear me call this the DRG. Uh, and then here, this one is the ventral root. And then the coming out of the DRG, we then have the dorsal root. So make sure you don't screw up dorsal root and dorsal root ganglion. They are different things. Okay, so then we come in to the nerve. And then when we come into the nerve, we have a horn right here. This is called the dorsal horn. So there are three horns that we have here. So there's a dorsal horn, there's a lateral horn, which I might be able to fit that there. Let's actually 
No. Let's undo that. <laughs> I almost really screwed that one up. Um, let's draw this one a little higher up here. Uh, because we have the lateral horn, we have no, we have the lateral horn, we have the dorsal horn, and then we have the ventral horn. We're running out of space over here. So this is the same thing right here. So right here would be the ventral horn. So we see these different layers right here that are covering it. Um, and then we have another way to orient yourself is to look at these little fissures. There's a uh, sulcus, well, sulcus and fissure. So there's one on the dorsal side, which we'll draw right here. And then there's one on the ventral side, which we'll draw down to here. Now let's label these things since we uh, labeled a couple already. So here we come into the dorsal horn. So we have dorsal ganglion, dorsal root, and then we have dorsal horn. Then we have lateral horn. Then we have ventral horn. Now these, so the, this one is a sulcus. This is called the dorsal median sulcus. Dorsal median, right out of space, sulcus. Down here then, this is the ventral side. So you see how these names all come together based on the side. If you know the side, you can get it down. This is the ventral median fissure. It's a little deeper than the sulcus, so it's a fissure. The ventral median fissure down there. So let's just make sure, oh, I missed two really important ones. The center here. Now we're kind of running out of space here. So um, the first one, let's go up here with it. So this one points to that and that. So this is the connection from the left and the right side. This is called the gray, gray commissure. And then in, in the middle, we have the hole that goes down the whole spinal cord. We'll just draw that down to the base down here. Uh, I don't want to cross lines. So let's go right over here with it. So the last two labels here, uh, we have the gray commissure. Again, that's the connection from the left and right sides. And then the central canal is the hole in the middle. So central canal. So those are the important parts of just the gross anatomy of the spinal cord here. So if you were to take a screenshot, now would be the time to take a screenshot. Okay, now I will clear it. And we're going to move on in this video and look at the other model. Now, I did label most things in this one. The other model does have some important parts I want to focus on now. So let's get it centered right here. And that's pretty good. Um, so now I want to kind of focus on first three parts that I couldn't fit in the last one. And this is the white matter. So we were kind of focused on the gray matter in the first video. So all the stuff that's peach colored here is gray matter. White matter is, of course, white matter. Um, so white matter is doing long-term communication. It's gray matter is only doing short-term communication. So if we're focused on the white matter here, the different regions have different names as well. Uh, so I'll just highlight the important ones. Uh, this one right here, this one right here, and then this one over here. Um, so just like all the other labels we've done, there's a dorsal, a lateral, and a ventral. So now this one is called the dorsal. Now, that's always a fun word to say because it's said funiculus. <laughs> the dorsal funiculus and then we have the lateral funiculus now there are different sections in here that go to different parts of the brain and they can be ascending or descending tracks but i'm not going to get into those in this video we we'll talk about them a little bit in the lecture portion and right here we have the ventral funiculus so that's just talking this is all white matter so white matter, and then the gray matter is in here. So let's go back and focus on the gray matter a little bit. To do this, I want to change up uh, some colors here and highlight some important regions. Well, first, let's draw the direction. So the input is coming through the dorsal side here. It comes through the dorsal side, it can come through there, it can come through there, and it can come up through there. And then it crosses via some interneurons, and then it exits. It could exit out the lateral horn, or it could ex exit out the ventral horns. So here, exiting out this way, this way, or this way, all coming back together and then going back out. So right here is where we'd have the spinal nerve, but then this is the dorsal side, and then this is the ventral side. So then these little pathways it takes are from different regions or have different functions. So let's increase my little spot size here. So let's first label this one. 
And let's go one, one spot size larger here. So that one where the dorsal side is coming in is an important region. And then let's, there's another spot right here. Boom, right there. Because they're, they're summating this information in slightly different spots. Uh, and then when we exit, it's slightly different as well. So let's change this color to green. Let's do green right here for the lateral horn. And then let's do orange then for the ventral horn. So orange spots right here. So now we can focus on what's coming in and what's going out. So let's go back to the pen, go back to a smaller thing here. Now I'm going to label some of these and just use abbreviations, but I will say them out loud. So what comes in right here? So this is somatic sensory or SS. This is coming in the dorsal side right here, somatic sensory. The second one is visceral sensory. So somatic is coming from your muscles. Visceral is coming the sensation, the sensory information coming from your organs and they go through different interneurons in here. And then depending on whether they're part of the peripheral or the autonomic nervous system, or the somatic nervous system, they exit in different ways. So here is visceral motor, VM is visceral motor, so that's controlling motor output of your organs. And then the orange one here is somatic motor. So every, all my movements right now, everything I'm doing is going out this lateral horn here, whereas visceral motor goes out, uh, goes out the ventral horn, whereas the visceral motor goes out the lateral horn. Sorry, I might have just said that backwards. So that's everything I wanted to draw on the spinal cord model right here. But if you look down here at this one, this one's slightly different because this one's a cross section. As we get closer, closer to the brainstem, it kind of changes its shape a little bit more and we lose the visceral motor horn as we get further up and it just becomes the ventral horn. But we'll talk about that more in the lecture portion. All right, so that is this image and that's all I wanted to label on our laboratory models. Uh, so I will clear this image now and just play this through. I do want to, we're not done yet. I do want to go over the actual 3D organon, which is another way to look at this. So that just finishes looking at that. So let's open up 3D organon now. Uh, so this is the, the nervous system. Uh, we talked about the brain last chapter, but right now I want to focus on the different parts of the spinal cord. If we add the connective tissue back, we can see these different layers that form. So right here, this first layer, this is the dura matter. Uh, so this one's not showing the additional layers we have. So this one isn't showing the um, epidural space, which would be above this, that fatty layer. So if we hide the dura matter, what should we have underneath it? The arachnoid matter. We hide the arachnoid matter, then we have the pia matter. So make sure you understand the order of the protective layers, and that's how we find the spinal cord, and the brain was sitting in that too. So now we see these different regions of the spinal cord as we go down. There are 31 pairs of spinal nerves. We'll talk about these spinal nerves more when we get to the peripheral nervous system, including all the cranial nerves up here, which will be the next uh, model we discuss. So here, the cervical region. Uh, so these are the cervical spinal nerves. And you see this is a little bit enlarged here. This is called the cervical enlargement. Uh, then we move down through. These are then the thoracic spinal nerves. You see it's not as... Mm, enlarged there. And then right down here, there's a little lumbar enlargement, and then it splits off right here. So this little tip right here, it's probably not labeled on this. This is called the conus medullaris. Um, so it's the last little part of the spinal cord. If we add the skeletal system here, this occurs at the L1 vertebrae. And not a lot of people realize the spinal cord actually ends at L1. So right, right here's your last, your 12th rib, and then right here's L1. So pretty, you know, not as far down as you think. Doesn't go all the way to your tailbone. Um, and then we see these, all these roots coming out right here. So all these dorsal roots. Now, what does this look like? They say it looks like a horse's tail. It's called the cotta equina. Um, so this is one reason I'm showing it is to show the cotta equina. And these are all then the lumbar spinal nerves. And then when we get down to the sacrum, we have the sacral spinal nerves. And then at the end here, this little root is called the phylum uh, film terminal. So I wanted to show just the different regions of the spinal cord and mainly to highlight the difference for what the cotta equina is, what the uh, the different enlargements are, the conus medullaris, and then the film terminal. Um, just to highlight a few different regions using 3D organon anatomy here. And you can see the curvature of the spinal cord too as we go down, of course, follows the curvature 
of the vertebrae. So that's all I have for this chapter here. Well, not this chapter, but this going over the spinal cord anatomy. Uh, next lesson, we will be going over the cranial nerves. And then maybe after that, I'll make a video for the actual spinal nerves for the different plexuses, unless I think I can cover enough in that lecture. All right, that is all I have for this. If you have any questions, remember, please reach out to me, email me, put them in the comments below. And I will see you all next time. I hope you all have a great day and bye-bye.